All right. So let's see what I read in July. <laughs> So I just did my Goodreads wrap up video. So this is um, my review video. This is just where I actually talk about the things that I accomplished instead of focusing on my shortcomings because <laughs> I got some. What I read in July. Let's start with an anthology series I picked up. This is Mysteries, Midsummer Sun, and Murders. Um, I thought this was going to be a collection of short stories, but it's actually whole books. So I picked out the one book from an author that I enjoy, which is Ellen Jacobson. So let me just um, get into my review and it will explain everything. I was excited to pick up this collection, especially when I learned that a new book by one of my favorite authors was featured in it. Overall, this review is for Planning for Murder by Ellen Jacobson but I do plan to read other books in the series at a leisurely pace <laughs> whenever I need a light read. Um, I enjoy getting to know um, a new band of characters to solve a murder mystery. Thea is likable and the return to her family was sweet. I enjoyed getting to know her parents, her brother, and her seemingly doomed cousin. Plus the bison with many names was a cute distraction from time to time. As always, I am completely enamored with this author's ability to make seemingly insignificant things and turn them into major plot points. Who knew stationary could be so dangerous? Like for real though, Ellen Jacobson cracks me up with how she takes things that just seem so mundane or insignificant and next thing you know, it's the center of, of the whole plot. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this portion of this anthology and look forward to more from this author in this new series. I am also looking forward to discovering other authors in this collection. Highly recommended. So an overall star, um, five star rating at this point, as I read more books in the series, I'll give little updates to this review and um, adjust the star rating as needed. So let's see what else I actually accomplished in the month of July. I read Reaching for Normal, Blue Moose number one. So apparently this series is pretty extensive. It's on like book seven or eight, maybe even nine. I'm not sure. There's a lot of books in this series. I don't know if I'll read the whole series, but I'll probably read more of the series. Um, this is another one that's not like my preferred genre, but I do find that I am reading more of it as I get older. Um, Apparently, I like romantic suspense. It's not my go-to, but I like it. So here's what I have. I gave it an overall good read star rating of five, but let's get into my review. Actual rating 4.75, but does that really matter? This is one of those books I was expecting to like simply because I was somewhat familiar with the author as a blogger, but I was not expecting to like it so much. This is not my, this is not my, ugh, this is not a genre I tend to navigate to. I'm reading my own words, people. It's eating it. Um, so I'm always delighted when the IWSG book club gives me a chance to step out of my comfort zone and it pays off. Before I get into what I loved about this book, I'll briefly mention the one nagging thing that kept me from giving it a solid five-star rating, knowing that this will likely not be an issue for most readers. <clears throat> so the main character experiences a lot of firsts in this book. There was one first in particular that didn't really do much for me. Um, I didn't understand why it had to be part of her character arc. I didn't feel, it didn't feel to me that that big thing would have changed anything about how the narrative of the story played out. I felt that the main character was already well-developed strong and had interesting characteristics that, that kept her from being generic in any way. This big thing was just something extra. Perhaps this is a trope in the genre that I'm not familiar with. Remember, I don't read a lot of romance or, or romantic suspense, so maybe this is like a thing and I just don't know it. Um, I want to be clear that it did not take away from the story in any way. I just didn't feel it was necessary. So I didn't want to give any spoilers, but if you read the story, you'll automatically know what this big thing is. And I was just like, 
didn't really do much for me, but it didn't take away from the story either. I just seemed, it just seemed kind of unnecessary. And that's literally the only reason why I didn't give this like a solid five star. Like it's a really good book. So here's what I loved. Um, the steam level for this story is very adult, but not vulgar in any way. It's nice to read mature scenes that don't turn into explo exploitive expositions of acts a reader can imagine for themselves if the writer knows what they are doing. Plus, I don't always feel the chemistry between fictional characters comes off as genuine, but I enjoyed seeing these two characters come together. So yes. Um, the characters, let's see, the leading man was a typical romantic lead, so no major re revelations there. Um, he was handsome and brooding. I did like that the author used some of that trope to introduce hard subject matter such as mental health and PTSD. He's also our connection to nature and the message of animal conservation that is present. He is a good character. Back to our fame, fame. <laughs> Seriously, these are my words. Back to our main uh, female character, Myla. I really like Myla. Um, and I love, okay, quick tangent. This isn't in my review. Obviously, I'm going on tangents all the time. When you read it and you find out how the name Myla came up, it's so cute. I love, I love the fact that that's how her name came about. Anyway, uh, where was I? <laughs> it's been a while since I've enjoyed a main female character like this that wasn't a person of color. She is a writer, she is a blogger, and a clumsy girl who likes to have adventures and try new things. She uses the word clumsy to downplay the fact that she has a physical disability, an ability that hasn't slowed her down or defined her in any way. I want to be friends with Milo. I really enjoyed reading about the town of Blue Moose, but don't think I'd want to visit unless it's as fun and beautiful in the summer as it is in the winter. Just too cold for me, but perfect for the setting of this story. I also like the villain in the sense that you love to hate a villain. I figured out who it was early on, but had a, but had no idea the level of crazy this character was going to bring, this character was going to present. It was thrilling to read about how it all came together in the end. Trigger warning, animal cruelty depicted without being glorified in any way. So yeah, we do have some components where that main character, that male character is doing like some animal conservation and there's some horrible things that are done, but it's not glorified in any way. And it does kind of move the narrative, not kind of, it does move the narrative of the story forward. So um, just know that there, that is in there. Um, for me, it was worth you know, going through all of that to get to the ultimate end of the story. But if that's going to be true, too triggering for you, then just don't read it. But you'll miss out on a really cool story. So just throwing that out there. Overall, highly recommend it to fans of romantic suspense, characters with varying ability, and lovers of nature. So yeah, I'm really glad I read this. I never would have read it if it hadn't been for my book club. And I will most likely be reading more in the series. All right, here we go. What else did I accomplish in July? Because I didn't as accomplish as much as I would have liked. I read Magic at Midnight and I gave it an overall star rating of four. So let's get into my review. Actual rating 4.25. So just a little bit higher than a four. This was a short read for me once I actually sat down to really read it. <laughs> I think I simply wanted more from it. It was well developed, but as a fan of fantasy, I wanted to dive into this world more. I wanted more of the history, the who, the where, the why. I wanted to know why the magical system was so limited to royalty. Ultimately, I wanted to have a better understanding of what happened at the end with the Pegasus and the glowing light. I didn't quite get that. Bottom line, I really enjoyed the story and just wanted more of it. Like, seriously, I had a good time. Um, there are many underlying themes fueling the narrative of this story, and some of them come clearly to the surface throughout the plot, while others are there between the lines. I do think it was clever um, of the author to pack so much into such a short story. I read this book for the IWSG book club and one of the questions um, we asked about was whether the book was preachy. Whether one likes or agrees with the, with the, let's, these are my words again. <laughs> whether one likes or agrees with the message in this book, I don't think it was preachy at all. 
This author understands the power of narrative and uses it to her advantage. Kudos to her. Anyone who thinks this is preachy probably just picked up the wrong book for them. Recommend it to fans of fairy tale retellings, diverse characters and cultures, empowerment tales, and magic. Must love magic. So, I mean, I feel like if you like fantasy, if you like magic, if you like fairy tales, you're going to like this. Um, if you like all of those things, but you have a very, like, I don't want to say like narrow, like some people just have certain points of view that they won't cross a line and that's perfectly fine. So um, I would say if you are a more conservative person, maybe pass on this one. But if you are a little bit open, it's a great story. I love a good story. All right, here we go. Last thing that I attempted to read is redemption. So let me, before I get into my review here, so uh, I try not to spend too much time going over stuff in my good read wrap up that's what this video is for it's a longer video it gives me a chance to say a little bit more so I am subscribed to like several newsletters where I learn about like new releases I learn about you know ebook sales and things like that so I find out a lot of, about a lot of books through those channels and I'm pretty sure that's how I found out about this book and so um every now and then I try to read something that's out of my comfort zone that's one of the main reasons why I'm so active in my book club is there's a lot of books that I never would have read if it had not been for my book club because I would stick to the same genres over and over. I will be reading just fantasy all day and night, throwing in some sci-fi, you know, maybe some horror. Like I, those, those are my go-tos, you know, give me some paranormal stuff, some ghosts, you know, that that's what I read. But I've expanded my horizons by allowing myself to be in book clubs and joining some of these newsletters and things like that. And so... I'm not the kind of person that I feel like I have to prove anything to anyone else. Um, I may have to prove something to myself. I don't know. I do like to challenge myself sometimes. Like, am I not reading this because of what other people have said? Or do I really genuinely not like, like, I feel like I have to try some, not all the time. Don't get me wrong. I do not need to walk on hot coals to know that I don't like to walk on hot coals. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to be like ridiculous, but I do think that it's for me anyway, sometimes okay to try something. And I've done this before. So this story is um, mature content, like adult only type book. And I've, I've tried books like this before. And, you know, I've had, I guess, decent success. Like sometimes I can get through the story and I'm like, okay, that wasn't bad. And sometimes I can't, you know, I don't know. But um, these, this is not something that I read on a regular basis. I, re I read maybe one of these books a year. And like I said, sometimes it goes well, sometimes it's not. I think I'm getting to the point where I'm just deciding that this genre is just, it's not for me and that's okay. But um, I did want to, you know, kind of give it the old college try to see if that was the case. And I think that's what I did with Redemption. So I think if I remember correctly, the reason why I chose this book was I liked the fact that the people on the cover were people of color. Um, I'm not one of those people who um, just like, I am, okay, I don't know how to say that. I don't always have to completely identify with the characters that I read about, but it's always nice to be able to identify with the character. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know I'm not living in some delusional La La Land where I expect every book to be, to be related to me. It would be nice, but that's not my expectation. Um, I happen to be in a mixed race couple. So if, when I see a book cover like this, I'm like, oh, let me just try it out and see. I don't know. Um, so anyway, that's the whole background as to why I even attempted to read this book. So let me get into the review for Redemption. All right. I gave it an overall star rating of two and my review will explain why. I don't feel comfortable leaving a low rating on this book, but I have a standard policy that if I DNF a book, it gets a two-star rating. Please don't let this rating deter you from this book if this is your preferred genre. Next paragraph, y'all. This is not my preferred genre. I wanted to read this to step out of my comfort zone and try something different. I've done this before. Sometimes it pays off and sometimes it has not. In this case, I really like the story and am disappointed that I won't find out what happened to these characters. Ultimately, it comes down to the adult content feeling exploitive and unnecessarily vulgar. I am an adult and I have no problem reading adult, adult content, mature adult content, but there is good writing and lazy writing. 
I feel I felt like this writer had such a good handle on world building and word choices, but when it came to the sex scenes, the vocabulary was reduced to a handful of crass words. I couldn't stay in the mood the writer was supposed to be putting me in. For me, it's just not worth it. I really wanted to see these characters come together, but not like this. I stopped reading at about the 35% mark. This just isn't my genre, but it could be yours. Hope the book has a good ending. The beginning premise was great. Unable to recommend it at this time. So there you go. That was me trying something different. Uh, and I wanted to reflect that in the review. I, I'm not trying to shut down this writer. Honestly, it, 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 I think the reason why, even though I feel a little uncomfortable, I do feel comfortable leaving the two-star ratings because when I'm reading this book, like she's clearly a talented writer. Like she sets up the scene well, she's developed these characters. I mean, I felt like I was in the cold freezing, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so clearly she has this talent for writing, but then when these intimate scenes would come up, it was like all of the, her vocabulary just disappeared she picked like four or five words and just kept repeating those four or five words over and over. And I was like, what is this? What is it? No, I don't want to read that. Like, I want to read the story. <laughs> like, she just completely took me out of her, what I thought was a wonderful story to put into these like scenes. And I was just like, that's really disappointing. But again, that could just be my preference. There's other people who might read that and be like, yes, that's exactly what I want. Pa more power to you but it's not what I wanted. So there you go. So that was my adventures in trying something new. Um, I started to read a book for my read with Faye challenge and didn't finish it. And honestly, I forgot that I was reading it, like straight up forgot. So I probably have to go back and start it over. <laughs> and that's what I will focus on in the month of August. So anyway, guys, um, how did your reading go in the month of July? Hopefully it went better than mine. Um, Everyone has different goals and challenges. So if you're only reading, you know, one book a month, that is fantastic. Don't be putting yourself down. You don't have to read as many books as I read. You know, you can read picture books if you want to. You can read comic books. Y'all, I read comic books. You know that I read comic books. Read whatever it is you want to read. Just read, you know? So anyway, that's me. Hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe, be blessed. Have fun reading.